happy growing. Oh, that was so cheesy. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Laura and I make videos about healthy, holistic lifestyle, green beauty, all that kind of good stuff. One thing you may not know about me is that I have become a huge plant lady. So I thought I would bring you four beginner plants that are basically impossible to kill. You can still kill them, but it's really, really, really hard to kill them. I can tell you this from personal experience because I have not always been a good plant mom. In fact, I would kill just about anything that I got. Now, I am not a plant expert. I would say I am advanced plant mom, intermediate to advanced plant mom. And I used to be in your position. I used to be really, really bad with plants. Probably about a year before I had my daughter, I got my first snake plant. And I literally just got it to put in the background of my videos. And I was like, I think I can keep this thing alive. And then that gave me confidence and then I had a child and I was like, hey, I can keep this snake plant alive and this person alive. I could totally keep more plants alive. And now I am living in a little bit of a jungle. In fact, so many plants that I actually had to get rid of some over the summer. So take it from me, I've been where you are and now I have thriving, beautiful plants and you can too. So if you just start with some that are easy, easy, easy and grow your confidence. So let's jump right in. Now the first plant we're gonna talk about, like I mentioned in the intro, is a snake plant. Now snake plants come in a couple different shapes, even the easy to find ones. There are of course, you know, rare to find ones. Like for instance, someday I would love to get a whale fin. <gasps> yes, please. But these ones come like this dark foliage, more straight up. This is one of my favorites. I have a couple of these. The bird's nest variety is really cute. They're like the tiny little compact guys. And then there is one like my Sydney, who, yes, most of my big plants have names, who has yellow on the outside of the leaves and a lighter green on the inside. The technical name for these plants is the Sansevieria. They're also called the mother-in-law's tongue and the snake plant. I think most people go by snake plant. These are so hard to kill. These are low light tolerant. That does not mean to stick them in a bathroom with no light. That means in a room where you are reading a book without any overhead lights on, that is low light. So you can put these in low light. They will thrive. They thrive on neglect, you guys. If you are watering these plants more than once a month, they will not like that. Do not water these more than once a month. Do not stick them in a room with no window and they will be happy. They are very slow growers, so they're not necessarily like really exciting to watch but I actually like that they stay the size that I get them because some of my plants grow so fast that then I end up having to move them because they grow out of the space that I had planned for them. All right, next up we got the ZZ plant. This is a little baby that I split off. So this is just one kind of silly looking stock. And then I have the bigger one in a different area of my house. So these are really fun because they're just such unique, like, artsy sculptural plants. Um, they can get huge. Again, these are gonna be slower growers, but they are very, very hard to kill. Again, the only way you're gonna kill these babies is by over watering them. So stick with the recommendations I gave you for your snake plant. Do not water this more than once a month. Don't do it. Again, these babies thrive on neglect. They also are very low light tolerant as well. So same as a snake plant, just don't put them in a bathroom without a window and you should be good. Low light tolerant doesn't mean that they only like low light. They could be in brighter light as well. Make sure that they're by some sort of light source, a window, a grow light, whatever. If you're a beginner, I'm sure you don't have a grow light, but any room with a window, these will be happy. All right, the jade plant. I have had this plant for almost four years. She's one of the longest plants I've had, along with Sid, my big yellow and green snake plant, and Stella, my monstera that you'll see next. Basically, after I had my daughter and I had the confidence from growing Sid, my snake plant, I was like, I'm gonna get some plants, and I got Stella, the monstera, I got this jade plant, I got 
a golden pothos and a satin pothos. Now pothos are also really easy to keep alive. I just don't have mine anymore to show you in this video, but you could totally, if you like a vining plant, you could do a pothos as well. But this jade plant, again, very hard to kill, thrives on neglect. I have gone through periods of time where I have watered her probably too much. I've gone through periods of time where I haven't watered her for probably months. She has been in very low light. She's been in very bright light. She is indestructible. Again, she's a very slow grower. Most of these easy beginner plants are going to be slow growers. So just keep that in mind. So I would say get the size that you want for the space of these three, the snake, the ZZ, and the jade. So she's just, I mean, she's beautiful. Also, legend has it that jade plants are good luck and prosperity. So a lot of people put them in the entryway of their business to bring them good financial luck. Also, you'll notice she's in a terracotta pot. When in doubt, put your plants in a terracotta pot if you are gonna repot them. I think that I'm gonna do like a beginner plant tip video all about beginner plant tips, but that would include watering and pot types and all that kind of good stuff. So a terracotta pot, if you are going to repot it out of the nursery pot, is a pretty safe bet because it helps the plant breathe faster. And then if you do overwater it, it helps it dry a little bit quicker. So she actually is really in need of a new home, but since it's winter, I'm not going to repot her until the spring at this point. Okay, number four, this is actually a propagation from my big Monstera Stella that I'm not going to hold on my lap because she's giant and super heavy. And last time I repotted her and moved pot, I like actually really hurt myself. So I'm just gonna show you the propagation from her. So good news, everybody's favorite big plant, the Monstera, is easy to keep alive. They like most light situations, I probably wouldn't put them in low, low light. I would say medium light to medium bright, medium light to bright and direct light. They grow really fast, unlike the other ones in this video, once their roots are established and they're super easy to propagate. So you can make yourself a new plant from your first plant. So this is the only one I would say, like probably get a smaller size than what you ultimately want for your space because it is going to grow pretty quickly once it establishes its roots. This one, water it when it's dry. What does that mean? It means stick your two fingers in the soil up to the second knuckle. If they come out dry, your plant is dry. If they come out with cold, like cold chunks of soil sticking to your fingers, your plant is wet. You can also get a moisture meter. I just find that fingers are more accurate. Again, don't overwater her. If the leaves are getting yellow, you probably have, but again, terracotta pot, you probably can't go wrong, or the nursery grow pot, probably can't go wrong. Just make sure she's getting some amount of light and water only when the soil is dry and you will have a beautiful plant, hopefully with fenestrations. Fenestrations are the split leaves. So this one, I actually cut these off. None of these were split leaves and I would be really surprised if I get a split leaf off of this propagation. Typically, if you want a propagation to have a split leaf, you should probably take one with a split leaf. Now, when your Monstera gets too big, don't do what I did, which is why my sweet Sella looks like she's recovering and only has three split fenestrated leaves. Just, you can put them in a bigger pot or you can cut some back, but I gave her like a dramatic cut back. Don't do that. Your fenestrations might not come back or they might take a really, 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 really long time to come back. So good luck, my new plant mama and papas. You can do it and you'll be on to bigger, cooler, awesomer plants soon enough once you get your confidence up. Let me know what other types of plant videos you would like to see in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, everybody.